Hello coders and thanks for joining the Renaissance Coders team in another Unity 3D tutorial. My name is Darren and today I'm going to talk about what it is that goes into creating your own custom Unity scripts. In this series we will cover how to structure your code, commonly used functions provided by Unity's API, and some little tricks will be sprinkled in the videos to help you out when creating your own scripts. In general these videos will be a combination of lessons and experimental projects so let's go ahead and get into it. I'm just going to find my project panel, right click anywhere within it, and choose the button to create a new C-sharp script. These tutorials are going to be C-sharp based, so if you feel like you need to see a JavaScript version of a video, then please don't hesitate to ask. Now by default, Unity will allow you to edit your scripts using MonoDevelop. Simply double click your script and it should open up. I have mixed feelings about MonoDevelop, on one hand it gets the job done, but at times, and in fact quite frequently for me, it can be buggy and slow. So I'm going to go ahead and use Visual Studio to edit my scripts. The code is going to be exactly the same, it's just a little bit of a different editing environment. If you want to go ahead and use Visual Studio with me, go up to the Assets tab in Unity, and down at the bottom click Sync MonoDevelop Project. Then just find your project in your directory and open up the c -sharp file. Of course, for this to work, you will already have to have Visual Studio installed on your machine. Okay, so from Visual Studio, I'm just going to go ahead and navigate the folders in my Solution Explorer. If you do not see this window, simply go up to the View tab and select Solution Explorer. I can find my script name somewhere within these folders and double click it to view its contents. Here we have some basic C -sharp code. I'm not going to go into the details of what everything means from a C -sharp standpoint, because we already have a series for C-sharp. If you feel lost, go check those out and you will be brought up to speed. As you can see, the script is automatically generated with the start and update methods already. These are called event functions and Unity has plenty more, the most important of which will be talked about in this video. The way Unity looks at each one of your scripts is by first checking if you have an event function in it, and second, Unity will determine which event functions to execute first. The start event function is going to be called before any game frames are executed, so you can think of start as your variable loading function. Let's move down a peg. Here we have our update function, which is also a Unity event function. Now update is where most of your game code will likely be, since it is called on a per frame basis. In future videos, you will see us using Unity's built-in timer within this function to yield more accurate results. Okay, now let's talk about a couple more event functions. Let's say we have some initialization code and start, but we want to be sure one of our script initializes before any other script. We can use the awake event function for this. Awake is always called before start, and only when the game object it is attached to is enabled. There are a couple more update functions that we need to talk about. Let's start with the easy alternative, late update. So Unity's late update function is simply called on a per frame basis, but only after update is called. Think about if we have a camera moving relative to a player. This system may behave better if our camera updates in late update while our player updates in update, to ensure that the camera moves only after the player moves. Alright, we're almost done guys. Let me go ahead and talk about one more update event function called fixed update. In many of our projects, we will be dealing with physics-based movement. For all physics-based calculations, we will be using the fixed update event function. Fixed update is not called on a per frame basis. For simplicity, let's just say that fixed update is called only when it needs to be called. It has a reliable timer built in that operates based on performance stresses during gameplay. In situations where the game is lagging, fixed update will try to pick up the slack and be called multiple times per frame to ensure that all the physics-based movements are not skipping around and game fluidity will be preserved. In high performance settings, fixed update will usually be called closer to the per frame basis. Since fixed update has its own reliable timer built in, we will not need to worry about using any other timers for calculations, as we do in update. So that's going to conclude your first Unity scripting lesson. Believe it or not, you already know more than many people, as these event functions are not covered in detail frequently enough. Go back and watch the video again if you missed some things because knowing how best to use Unity's event functions will benefit you in the long run and ultimately make you a better developer. Next week we are going to get into some good old fashioned scripting, so get ready for the development side of things to begin picking up exponentially. If you need to bone up on your Unity navigation skills, visit our Unity overview video where we cover some of the important basics. 
If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to get the best out of your learning experience with us. This has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial. Thanks for watching.